Hello Sonic Crafters, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be talking about fair dealings. You know, the thing that I mentioned at the end of the fair use thing. Now of course, the UK fair use version of the law isn't perfect either. It's mostly just questions like, does it do this? Does it do that? But it is so much more lenient than fair use and leaves so much less in the grey areas such as non-commercial research and private study study which includes which includes just do researching for an assignment inside college or you know just doing your BTEX every fucking week yeah like, it does say students and researchers. So, pretty much this allows you to use a segment of work inside of some type of thing. Fair use doesn't really deal with that, but you could argue that, well, it's just for commercial products. Even though you can get prosecuted for it for stuff like fan games where you aren't making any money from it, so, I know. Text and data mining for non-commercial research. Again, this is just finding information, like, like statistics, that kind of things, trends, useful information, patterns in data, whatever, that is allowed. That Finding information from it, like, the closest fair use comes to it is just education, so. Anyway, criticism, review, or reporting current events. Pretty much educating, criticism, and it left out Paddy, but it mentions it later on. This is pretty much just the commentary bit of fair use, it's pretty, yeah, and then of course there's an entire bit on education, which allows teachers to pretty much show, show something in its entirety to a, in a non-commercial manner inside proper, proper establishments like a school, uni, col college, sixth form, Whatever. There's helping disabled people. Oh yeah. This, as I mentioned, it allows you to to use as much as you want just as long as you're illustrating a point and not done for commercial purposes. Like, you could pretty much play the entire thing, but you can just say, oh yeah, this is just show just educating them about different lighting, colour grading, fucking camera technique, CGI, s shot reverse shot, whatever. Oh yeah, camera positioning. So, yeah, you can pretty much do that and it includes recording TV shows, photocopying things. You can make as many copies as you want. So, teachers, you can, just as long as you can make an excuse for why you're doing it, you can have however much you want. And then, of course, there's helping disabled people, something which is never touched upon inside fair use. Though this isn't really necessary, it is a good thing for just accessibility to certain works. So basically, as long as you lawfully own the thing and there isn't already a copy accessible for disabled people, you can pretty much make, translate it for them. Such as, I don't know, there's someone who you're trying to do, well, there's a blind person you want to show the annoying orange to for some fucking reason. 
you can pretty much narrate over that because there isn't a narration thing. Though, I don't think that people would, would want to narrate. So, the cheese started to get grated. As more and more, more gratings of him happened, more and more tiny slices of cheese fell onto the plate. As cheese screams in agony, the annoying orange just cringes at the thing which he tried to warn him about. Yeah, very fucking horrific. So yeah, this is pretty much just audio descriptions, making braille, large print, whatever. Subtitles for deaf or hard of hearing people. You know, just shit like that. Making accessible copies of books, newspapers for dyslexic people. Yeah. Time shifting. A recording of a broadcast can be made in domestic purposes for private and domestic use to enable it views or listen to more at a more convenient time. This is pretty much on demand TV which is why sky boxes and virgin media boxes and pretty much everything that's not free view in the UK has a little record button. You can time shift. We're time travellers. No. And this could always apply to, say, a live stream. Like, you know, you're living in the UK, someone streaming on Twitch, which is America old. Well, I'm in the UK. So I'm just going to record the live stream so I can watch it later. Like how there's archiving for most of the streaming services, so... You don't even have to do that, but it's there if you want to. And then, well, if it doesn't. And then, of course, there's parody and, yeah, just comedy, shit like that. It's using a little bit inside something else, whether it's just a sketch for you to do reference humour, you know. Yeah, but you have to make sure that you aren't using too much as well as with pretty much every commercial use. And then certain permitted uses of orphan works. Basically, if one or more of the rights holders cannot be reached or is unknown, you can use it. Yeah. So. So, it, let's say... If Disney just suddenly disappeared instead of waiting for their copyright to to dissolve, it's like, oh, Disney lo no longer s exists, huh? No, a better example would be Bubsy the Bobcat. Like, the rights, if the rights holders cannot be he held, you can make his big comeback. Sufficient knowledge, you have to actually know the work you're doing it, such as for fucking review, or criticism, or news reporting. It's pretty much trying to stop the shitty reporting things which you get on every news site nowadays. Fair dealing, which pretty much is, does, does it affect the market of the original work, such as, say, a let's play. No, it doesn't. You're, you're doing it for a video watching audience instead of s interactive media. And then is the amount of work taken reasonable and appropriate? It doesn't say a small amount. It says, it. Did you take, take, make sure that you don't take too much? So let's plays are perfectly legal under fair dealings. And then technological protection measures, so making sure that something, you have a copy just in case it breaks. And then further guidance, just adding more, just adding more information to it. So yeah, that is fair dealings. It took me 10 minutes just to go through it. 
I think 